Welcome to this tutorial, uh, which is going to show you how to create a one bit full editor using VHDL and synthesize it using Xilinx ISC tools. So, the very first thing that you have to do if you want to synthesize an editor is to understand how editors work. In this case, we want to know the difference between a half editor and a full editor. So, a half editor basically just adds one bit without the carry in of the previous stage. So you have two inputs A and B and it will create a sum and a carry out. And you can see from this from the screen you can look at the uh, lookup table. Now a full editor basically has three inputs. You have the two bits that you want to add plus a carry in from a previous stage and it will create again two outputs the sum of the three bit inputs and the carry out and you can see now the truth table of the full editor. So this is what we want to implement in VHD a full editor. So the first thing that we have to do once we understand how editors work is to open ISC from Xilinx and to create a new project. So this is the version that we're using 14.6 ISC and the first thing we want to do is create a new project. Now we were going to follow the wizard the Xilinx ISC tool creates so we add we create the name full editor for the new project we click on the next button And then we select our options. In this case, uh, you have to choose the FPGA that you're targeting. If you're using a specific FPGA board, you can choose one from the Dropbox, the combo box selected, so it will then automatically set up all the different constraint files for you. And if you do not target any particular FPGA board, then you just choose one of the FPGA tools. You select the language that we're targeting, in this case VHDL, and any FPGA, and you can click on the next button. So you can review the data from the project and you click on OK button. So that has created an empty project for us. The next step is to create a VHDL file. For that we go to the project folder, we create a new file and then we select a VHDL file from all the options that we have. So in this case we create a VHDL file, we name that file, in this case full editor or full, and now it creates gives us the option to create the entity of the VH. This will be the input and the output ports of the full editor. In this case we have three inputs and two outputs and they're all one bit signals. So we just need to write down the name of the pins of the inputs, in this case A, B, C, N, and the direction of the signals. A, B, and C, N are inputs and the sum, the S is an output and the C out, the carry out, is again another output. So this will create a top module, the entity of our VHDL code. We name that entity and the, and the architecture, we click on next, we review that and we accept that. And we will see that Xilinx ISC has created the VH, a VHDL template for us, including all the VHD libraries, the entity with the three inputs and the two outputs and an empty architecture which basically models the behavior of the, of the full editor. But you can see there are three inputs, two outputs, and they're all standard logic, which means a single bit input and outputs. If we review again the architecture of the full editor, we can see the three inputs and the two outputs, and they're all single bits. Now we can close the slide and we can we'll have to write the architecture, the behavior of the adder. In this case it's very simple, we just have the sum is equal to the XOR of the three inputs and the C out just followed the, the schematic that we saw before in the, in, the, in the slide. We can see that again here is basically the XOR gate of the two inputs and uh, the, the output of that. So we just wrote, write the behavior of the adder in VHDL and now we can synthesize it and create a hardware out of this description. So for that we go again to the project and we select the project. We have to select this file as a top module so for that we right click on the VHDL file and select as a top module and now we can synthesize the circuit. So we can have multiple VHDL files and then we have to select which one we want to synthesize as a top module. Once it is finished, in the synthesis result, we can actually look at the hardware generated by the synthesizer by Xilinx ISC. You click on the um, symbol generator, we select the top module and it will create the hardware block for our circuit. Here we can see there are 
the logic generated in terms of we see the three inputs, we see the three XOR gates and we, the logic for the carry, carry output. And we can also see, now we can look at the architectural view, the mapping of this logic onto the FPGA's lookup tables, the resources that the FPGA has. FPGA is built out of lookup tables, mainly for input, one output lookup tables. You can see it has used two lookup tables. This is the technology mapping of the of the one bit adder. It has used two lookup tables, one to generate the output and one to generate the carry output, one for the sum, one for the carry. So this is the technology view of the synthesized circuit. Now once we have synthesized the circuit, we can also look at the synthesis report, but this will tell us exactly how many logic resources of the FPGA our circuit has, uh, requ requires in terms of lookup tables, DSP macros, embedded memories, pins, and so on. So in this case, if we look at the synthesis report, we can see how many slices or, or uh, logic cells it has used. It's a percentage of the total resource in the FPGA. But the key important, another important thing that it shows you is the critical path. That's the longest path in your circuit. And that's important in order to see if you can meet the timing constraints or not of the circuit. So it's always important to look at the synthesis report once you've synthesized the circuit. Now, before we continue with this one, we, what we need to do is to simulate, make sure that the circuit works correctly. For that, we need to create a test bench. Now, what we can do is just click on the project folder again and we add a new file. In this case, we're going to select VHDL test bench. We want to now simulate the behavior, make sure that the circuit, the description of the error is correct. We create, we specify the name, we select the top module, in this case our full adder, and it will create an empty test bench for us. So this is a wrapper around our VHDL code that allows us to simulate this code. So when we first generate the test bench and we want to synthesize, uh, compile it and simulate it, it will give us some errors. And if we look at what it is generated as a top module, we see a top module, an entity, which is empty. This is the signature of the test bench that has the entity is empty and it has instantiated all the components that we have in the VHDL code. In this case, our full adder. We see that full adder is being declared as a full adder component, and then it will be instantiated, and you can instantiate as many times as you want if you want to build larger adders. It will declare some internal signals, and it will instantiate that adder. So this is the signal, the clock period, and now you see that the test bin generator creates some brackets around the clock. We need to get rid of those brackets in order to compile this correctly and to simulate that. And we need to, and we see that the program has been instantiated, the port map. We get rid of all those brackets that the template generates for us so that we basically manually have to modify these. And then we can set the test vectors in the stimulus file generation part. In this case, we select, we specify the inputs, input values of all the input ports of the full adder, the A, B, and the C in. And then we specify how many clock cycles we want to wait to generate, to apply the next test vector. Again, we specify that in our, in the test bench, as indicated. So we can continue adding all the test vectors for every clock cycle. In this case, we change the inputs. We modify the input stimuli to our full adder. And once this is done, we can basically firstly do a syntax check. On the right-hand side pane, we see they have a, uh, the syntax check generator. And when we do that, we'll see that it's generated some errors now. It's telling us there's an error. There's a signal clock missing. So in this case, what he was saying is that the template generator from Xilinx did not generate a signal called clock. And we have a clock process called clock generator. So for that, we need to, in order to make it work, we need to declare a signal called clock that will change every clock period or every half of the clock period. So we add the signal to the test bench generator. Now the syntax check passes and now we can run execute the simulator. We're going to run Xilinx ISC simulator, built-in simulator called iSIM. We click on the simulation simulator and it open iSIM. This is the Xilinx simulator and we can see the waveform 
of our simulation result. We can zoom in and we can see in a way from now the values of the test vectors that we have applied to, for, to test our full letter. We see the values of A, B, and C, N, and we look at the results. Now we can see if the result is correct, the result of the sum and the carry out. So with this, we conclude this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please drop me a line. Thanks for, again very much for watching.